Oiling system upgrades. Okay guys, how much power do you get upgrading the oiling system on your 347 Ford? What about a 427 Ford? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at performance modifications. I'm gonna give you some dyno results, but it's not on the usual stuff. We're not looking at heads or cams or intake manifolds or even boost, but don't get discouraged. We're taking a look at modifications to the oiling system. The oiling system is the lifeblood of your car and without it, that motor will not run. But not only that, if you have the right oiling system, you can make even more power. So let's take a look at two different combinations, a 347 Ford, and a 427 Ford. Now let's take a look what happens when I did a Mylodon oil pan and windage tray upgrade on both. Okay, let's see what happens when we do our uh, oiling system upgrades. Normally when we do performance modifications, we're looking at cylinder heads, camshafts, intake manifolds, or even boost or nitrous, those kinds of things that make huge power gains. But the oiling system is very important. Really, without a good oiling system, your motor is just not going to last. And if you have a really good one, as we see here, we're actually going to also improve the power in addition to basically keeping your motor alive. So let's take a look at our test motor. This was a 347 stroker. We'll go over here and we'll take a look. 347 stroker Ford, so a small block Ford, the stock, like a production five liter late model kind of, <laughs> I say late model from the 80s and 90s, um, the hydraulic roller five liter block. We had a 347 stroker kit put in this thing. It had a scat uh, cast uh, stroker crank, a, th a, a 347 stroker crank. It had 5.4 inch forge rods. It had flat top pistons with valve reliefs. We put a small camshaft in this one. It was a Comp Extreme Energy 274, which is, I, I use that a lot. And we'll see, if, based on the horsepower and torque, you can see that's a fairly small cam because the horsepower and torque were very, very similar. So on a 347, that's actually a pretty mild cam. I used that cam in my 302 and it worked very, very well. And I've used it in endless amounts of times. We topped this 347 uh, for this test with a set of trick flow twisted wedge, the as cast heads. We ran an Edelbrock Performer RPM non-air gap intake manifold. We ran a 750 Holly. We had our inch and five eighths hooker long tube headers and MSD distributor. And also they're showing a Rattler balancer, <laughs> probably something that we had probably laying around that I needed a damper for. And we put that thing on there or that balancer so let's take a look and see what we ran. We ran this with a basically stock five liter pan and pickup and a standard volume oil pump. The, the pump was constant through all the testing, so that's not really important. But run with our stock oil pan and 5W30 oil. This thing produced 432 horsepower, 433. Let's see here. Yeah, 432 horsepower and 434 foot-pounds, as I said, because torque is equal to, or in this case, maybe even a touch better than the, the peak horsepower. We're seeing that that was a fairly mild camshaft. We've run other combinations like this with much bigger camshafts, and you'll make a lot more peak power. This is with a stock oil pan. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we upgraded to the Mylodon pan. So what we did, and you can see we picked up, we didn't pick up too much power down low, which is pretty typical of oiling system mods, um, but we picked up power through a lot of the curve and the biggest gains came at the top of the rev range where this thing made 444 horsepower. Peak, peak torque was up a little bit too, 440 foot pounds of torque. And what we see here and the reason that we see it when we, we replace the factory pan and pick up which had no baffling in it, no nothing, just an open pan basically. And we replaced that with a Mylodon pan and the Mylodon pan had a couple of things going for it. It had greater capacity, which is fine, but it also had a kick out in the pan. So what happens is when you spin these, when the motor is spinning around, what it does is grab oil and creates this maelstrom of, of oil and air. And it wants to, it's obviously rotating this cyclonic action, rotating in one direction. And what a kick out pan does is basically give it an edge. So what happens is the oil and air are spinning around and they'll come up and hit this edge and it'll take that oil and have it drop back out of suspension. So anytime oil hits the spinning crank, that's resistance against the crank. And we see that as a, you know, 
know, they're tiny droplets, but we see that basically as resistance to the crank and we'll see that happen in power. The other thing that the Mylodon pan had was an integrated windage tray, which obviously helps too, which actually stops some of the windage therefore the name, windage tray. And the combination of the two actually picked up a pretty good bit of power. It was 10 or 12 horsepower, which is good. And the other thing that's important to note, and we'll talk about this on the 427 as well, it's important to note that this is a static test. When we run these engines on the engine dyno, they're secured down. So there's no fore and aft movement. There's no lateral movement. There's no up and down movement like you might see actually out on a road course, at a drag strip, we got, we got pan slosh. So you got all kinds of things that happen that what they do is make the baseline power output worse because if the oil is moving around the crank can grab more of that while it's moving the the what happens is the pan and the windage tray the kick out pan the pan design stuff become even more beneficial when the engine is moving around as it is out in the real world but even on the dyno here in a stationary event we saw some pretty good power gains now let's take a look this was on a 347 let's check out the larger 427. Okay, we've taken a look at what happens when we do an oil pan upgrade from the stock 5 liter pan to the Mylodon kickout pan and integrated windage tray on a smaller 347. I ran a similar test on a larger 427, so a 351 base stroker using a dart block uh, to make it 427 cubic inches. And we ran a similar pan. Obviously, they aren't the, exactly the same pan because one's a Windsor and one's a 302 base deal. So the pan is different, but the design is very similar. So the pan had a kick out, and I'll show you a picture of that here. You guys can get an idea what that is. It had an integrated windage tray. Obviously, we had a dedicated pickup for that combination. And this was used, um, we had to do a little bit of clearancing and things to make this work on our dart block. The pan, uh, I don't think was exactly designed for the um, four bolt caps that we had on this motor, but this was 427 inches. So it was a 4125 bore and a four inch stroke. <laughs> so to get the big bore, we had to go to the dart block, which worked out fantastic. And let's take a look and see what this test motor was, uh, other than being 427 inches. It was 12 and a half to one. It had a, again, a scat. Now I think that this one was a Lenati, um forge steel crank. It had forge rods in it. It had uh, flat top pistons in it. This was 12 and a half to one with the Airflow Research 225 heads that we put on it. We ran inch and three quarter headers on it. We ran a Super Victor intake. In this case, on this test, we ran a 1050 RS Demon on it. We had a Comp Extreme Energy solid roller camshaft in it. I'll go ahead and put the specs up on this 286 Comp camshaft. And we ran this thing not with a factory pan, because the factory pan wouldn't go on here, but we ran this with an inexpensive pan from the guys back in the day of Coast High Performance. I don't know who made this for them, maybe Canton or somebody, but there was no windage tray and just a... Um, like a sump cover so nothing there's a little bit to keep it from sloshing around but that really wasn't a problem on the, on the engine dyno and a dedicated pickup for that pan so we did a pan upgrade like we did with the 347 um we ran this thing obviously carbureted mse distributor and that kind of stuff so run with this um inexpensive you know pan that you guys supplied from coastside performance i'll go ahead and show you a picture of that our 427 produced 645, 646 horsepower and 533 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when, uh, like with the 347, when we did the Mylodon pan upgrade. And again, the Mylodon pan had a, I'll show you the, the kick-out section of the pan to stop oil from sloshing as it spins around to hit. And I'll show you the integrated windage tray. You can also use a separate windage tray, and I'll show, show you a picture of that. All of that's possible with the pan, and there are even different kinds of windage trays. You can run the solid windage tray that's louvered. You can run the diamond scraper ones that are screens and all that. But anything to get the oil off of the crank, basically, and to stop the oil from coming back up uh, in the pan and sloshing around and, you know, causing problems. You're just trying to get the thing so the oil pump picks up just liquid oil and not aerated oil. And also so the oil is not sloshing around, hitting the crank and stopping the thing from making power. So run with the Mylodon pan. The combination produced 655 horsepower. So we picked up 10 or 11 horsepower, I think. 
and peak torque was up just a little bit because most of this was happening past the torque peak, but 537 or 38 foot pounds of torque. This motor had a pretty good size camshaft in it. We were mostly concerned with what was happening uh, out on the top end. We didn't run it down to 2,500 or even 3,500 RPM, but the gains are usually less from an oiling system modification down there. But as we can see, like with the 347, having a good oil pan is not only worth power, but as we've talked about many times, it's also very important just to keep the motor alive because you want to make sure that you have a constant supply of oil to all of the parts in the motor and not aerated oil, hopefully good oil, and also it's worth extra power. Armature Holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.